So why do we need sig figs? We need them so that we can keep ourselves in check, so that we don't overstate any answer. So how do I actually identify how many significant figures I have? A sig fig is any known number that is not simply a zero that is a placeholder. So let's see what I mean by that. Here's three numbers. This is very straightforward. These all have four significant figures. I can put this number down here. Boom, that's three significant figures. This one here, that's six significant figures. The only thing that is a question mark for people typically with this type of thing are the zeros because zeros get a little tricky. This zero right here is truly a piece of information. It's a number. It's a zero instead of a one or a three or an eight. Same can be said for this one right here. That's a zero as opposed to some other digit. That's, that's a known and important figure. Also same can be said here. If I did not know that that was a zero, I simply would not put any digit there whatsoever and I would only report five significant figures. But if I know it's a zero, I want to provide that information for someone. But this brings up the whole zero problem. So you have to be really careful with your zeros. I highly recommend that you take any number, at least mentally, and put it into standard scientific notation to think about the number of sig figs. So I can say 8.34, there's my number in standard scientific notation, that's three sig figs. I cannot get any benefit, any more information by doing a unit conversion. So now I'm going over here and I'm just reporting that same measurement in a different set of units. It has to still be three significant figures. It's kind of hard to see that if this is all you're looking, but if you look at the number in standard scientific notation, it gets much easier to identify that you actually have three sig figs. Zeros in front of those numbers are simply just placeholders keeping track of the size of the number. I can extend this concept. We're looking at megagrams now. I have more zeros, but I have not gained any number of significant figures. I can go the other direction can't gain information. So now I have three significant figures over here, even though there's this trailing zero. That is a placeholder zero. And lastly, I'll put the micrograms. Same deal. Look at the standard scientific notation to identify this. But this does bring up an issue about these particular zeros can be very confusing. Let's start over with this nice fresh number here, 95,000 micrograms. How many significant figures are there in this number? It's not particularly clear. What somebody should do in an event like this is they should report the number in scientific notation. You can see here that I'm very clearly identifying that this is only two sig figs. Whereas if I actually know that the next digit over is a zero as opposed to some other number, I can write it like that. And I can show that here. A slightly different method that can be used if you come up on this number 140. If you want to show somebody that, that all three of those digits are significant, even that zero, what you can do is you can just plop a little decimal at the end of it. So notice that I've put a decimal place down there. That indicates that all of those digits are significant. And I gave another example there with the 10. So if I walk up on a 10 with a dot after it, I know that those are both significant. It's not just a number that was rounded to 10. As another quick aside, not all numbers are the same. Some numbers are considered to be exact, which is to say that they would have an infinite number of significant digits. For example, I have four beakers. Four is not a measured number. That is something that is exact. I can assume that that is 4.0000, however many zeros I want, in order to make sure that it is never a limiting factor for me. Many conversion factors are also considered to be exact values, like 12 inches by definition is equal to one foot, 2.54 centimeters by definition is one inch. So when you have those exact conversion factors, you can use those too as having an infinite number of decimal places. A different way to say this is that there is no new uncertainty that is all of a sudden put in because I'm using these conversion factors or that counted number. Okay, that's how we identify them. So now how do we use the things? Turns out that it depends on what type of mathematical operation you're looking to do. 
We're going to start by looking at multiplication and division. That's the easiest for us because we use that in our example. All you have to do here is first identify the number of significant figures and all your measured values and then report your final answer to the same number of significant digits as your limiting one, as your smallest number of sig figs on your measured value. And that's all you have to do. You just have to remember that some numbers like counted values and some of those conversion factors have in theory an infinite number of sig figs. Addition and subtraction we haven't talked about yet. It's a little bit different. This time I am actually interested in what the decimal place looks like. Let me just start by showing you an example here. So this is what not to do when you're dealing with significant figures. 4.3 plus this tiny little number is not equal to this 4.30002. That would be gaining me information that I don't actually know. I cannot go from two sig figs and one sig fig to all of a sudden getting six out of this. Something is wrong here. The way that you must handle this is you have to say that I have this 4.3 value and then I'm going to add to it this incredibly small amount. And what do I get when I'm done? I still get 4.3. I have to cut things off wherever my smallest shared decimal is. That happens to be right here for these particular numbers. Conceptually, what we're doing is if I have a swimming pool and I say there's 20,000 gallons in it, and then somebody takes an eyedropper and puts an extra drop in there, I'm not going to take into account the volume of that eyedropper that I just put in there. It still has to be that 20,000 gallons. You wouldn't say 20,000.000 and so on, two, because of that eyedropper, because you don't know that first big number that precisely. Notice that we have not gained any sig figs here. That's a good thing. That means we're doing it right. Unfortunately, it is possible to lose significant figures. Let's look at the subtraction process. I have 4.3 minus this very precise number, 4.00002, six significant figures. I do that subtraction, and if I do it correctly, I end up saying that I have now just 0.3, one sig fig. I don't know how this bigger number was varying way back here, so I can't really say that this was accomplishing a whole lot. The last topic that we're going to look at can be the trickiest for a lot of people. By the time you're doing significant figures in a science class, sometimes you haven't really done much with logarithms in a math class. But let's take a look at this anyways. Logs deal heavily with the scale of a number, how big the number is. After you take the log of a particular number, you're going to get out something that has a decimal, probably, and only the digits to the right of the decimal place are significant. Let me show an example of this. Let's just take this number that has four sig figs. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put in scientific notation. So here it is. Now I'm going to take the log of this number. It's the same to take the log of either of those, but I actually want to consider the one on the right because I'm going to use the property of logarithms where log of a times b is equal to log of a plus log of b. So I can say this and I can split it up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce each of these to a number here. The first one, the first term is going to go to this, which I haven't rounded, this 0.5385 and so on number. The second term though is interesting because it is exactly two or an infinite number of sig figs, 2.000, etc. Now I add those two things together using my significant digit rules that I've learned before. I'm going to give one, two, three, four significant digits on this log number because I started with four significant digits up here. That's what I'm discussing up here, where only the digits after the decimal place are significant. You can see I rounded this one up to a six. Okay, so I add them together. There's my final answer. This number, though, only has four sig figs that I'm reporting. If you're more of a visual pattern recognition type of person, you might like this table that I put together. Notice I'm taking the same number, except I'm changing it by a factor of 10 each time. 
If I write in scientific notation, it looks like this. It's kind of easier to see that way. Four sig figs every single time. Then I'm going to take the log of those numbers and notice that the only thing that changes up front here is that first digit. Notice that all of these are remaining the same. I'll talk about the difference here in just a moment. But these are not rounded. So what I'm doing in this last column is I'm showing the appropriately rounded numbers because of significant figures. If the difference between the bigger than one, smaller than one, so I'm talking about over here, the back end of these things, if that was confusing to anybody, I might be able to help out. First of all, though, notice that if I were to take the back part of this and add it to the back part of that, it's going to be exactly equal to one. There's just a pattern that's going on here with logs. If we go back to my original proof, let's pretend that I had used a slightly different number. So I'm going to mess with this part that I've highlighted here. Instead of being 10 to the positive 2, let's pretend that it was 10 to the negative 2 as my original number. Then it would have been exactly minus 2 or infinite sig figs. Then I would add together this first term plus a negative number and that's where I would have ended up with this new number here that has a slightly different back part. Exponentials have to follow the same rules except go in reverse. I'm going to use the example of pH since that's a common example for this. I'll say pH 5.62 only has two significant figures. We're doing the reverse here so only the ones after to the right of the decimal are significant. So if I did my anti-log here, if I did my exponential and went 10 to the negative 5.62 so that I could convert this pH into a concentration of my H+, plus, that's if you don't know what I'm talking about just kind of take this as a given that this is how you would do that. But when I do this calculation here uh, I would get this full number here which is not rounded but as I stated before in blue I only started with two significant figures so I would round my end concentration here down to two significant figures. Alright we went through a ton of stuff and hopefully you picked most of it up if not go back and you should be able to hit pause if you want to look at any of the slides in more detail but for now if you think you got it you should let your computer know.